through all the time when I was a small boy. One of the very first Disney films that I remember seeing as a small boy was, was Cinderella. And I was, I was hooked, completely fascinated with the idea of, of drawings coming to life and becoming characters. And so I, in early age, I guess, when I was a small boy, I was what I wanted to grow up and be. So here I am. A big part of, a, of being a good animator is acting need to be a, a good actor and study acting because it's about the performance. Whether you're drawing it or you're creating it on a computer, it's still about the performance and understanding who these characters are you know, and how to bring them to life. So being a good actor is a big part of it. I had to be able to take the ideas that I had as an actor and then create that in a drawing. So that was kind of my, my means to the end, which was the performance created by, by drawing. Now it's a performance created by you know, manipulating a computer rig. So it's a different tool, but it's still the idea of creating a performance. Number three would be uh, somebody that likes to be a part of a, of a team, a uh, good team here, because there's, there's uh, hundreds of people that make these movies, and it's not just you know, a couple of people. And so you need to be a good team player, basically. You need to play well and get along with others. Those, those three things I think would make for a pretty good game. Well, I'll tell you one misconception. When in the hand-drawn days, a lot of people would always ask me, don't you get bored drawing the same thing over and over every day? And I'm like, no, because I never draw the same thing over and over every day. And it's the same even in the computer world. You're not animating the same thing every day. And it's not boring because every day is different. Every scene is different, every character is different, every situation that the characters are in is different. So again, it's always about, you know, creating an acting performance. So that that's that's fresh every every single day when you come to work. I've been there for over almost two years now, uh, working alongside the animators and just trying to make sure that the uh, performance and the acting and the characters are as exciting as they were in the first film. So if you love Wreck-It Ralph in the first film, I think you're going to love them even more in the second film as they go out of the video game world and uh, explore the amazing world of the internet. And hopefully Ralph won't break it too bad, but uh, you know, Ralph's there, so things are going to happen. <laughs> but go see the film. Disney princesses have, have evolved um, largely because uh, they're much more involved in the story. And I think, in my mind, that the, the early leading ladies, the early princesses, were much more uh, reactionary. Whereas now, starting with Ariel and moving forward in time, a lot of our girls are much more proactive. They're much more involved in the story. And they make decisions. And those decisions, you know, move the story along. So it's a, it's a slightly different... Um, structure story-wise. Some you could argue they're, they're stronger personalities, and uh, but they're all unique personalities. So they're all strong in their own way. And even you know, somebody like Snow White was, was, was strong in her, own, in her own way for her time. But what's really fun is seeing all of these gals together for the first time, which you don't even get to see that in the parks. I can't even think of a time where I've seen all, all the princesses. We have 14 in this movie all together for the first time. So the trick is keeping them, you know, who they are, but then having them all together like a big, you know, it's like a big slumber party, you know, where they're all together and, and just kind of hanging out. They're all good friends and it's, it's really exciting.